Okay, so <clears throat> let me kind of back up in the example uh, that I was working at the end of the last video. I The 15 minutes uh, kind of snuck up on me, and I had to cut that last video off quickly. But um, so so it seemed like it seemed like we were going to be okay in just um, picking a value, a specific value for m. Right, but we saw <clears throat> we saw here that 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 didn't work, and and I wanted to maybe explain that a little better. Hopefully, I don't <clears throat> make things worse by trying to explain this more. But you know, if we if we go with our our initial thought here, which was that if we pick n to be two two squared two squared, which is four greater than m. Right, it was easy to think of some values where four wasn't going to be greater than those values. So, so we said um, five, six, a hundred. Right, those would all be counterexamples because four isn't greater than five. Four isn't greater than six. Right, but <coughs> but if I had instead, if I had instead picked uh, n equal to three, three squared is nine. Right, if I had thought about it that way, well, then then these these values for m five and six those wouldn't have worked because those are less than nine, right? So the the thinking here was that the value that I choose for m depends on what I had already chosen for n, right? So that was kind of a clue that what I select for m has to involve n, and I've got to I've got to ensure that the value that I choose for m is greater than n squared, right? So by appropriately forcing uh, forcing this to be n squared plus one, right? M must always be greater than n squared, and so then what I did from there was I just substituted. I went to my formula here and I substituted in n squared plus 1 which got me to this step <clears throat> and then I just subtracted n squared from both sides and you know maybe I didn't have to actually do that that last step but just to get to a point where I've got a statement that is that is obviously false so let's see where were we at in the proof I I selected a value for m, which resulted in a statement that is obviously false for for all values. I should say for all integer values of n. In in fact, n drops out, so it's not going to matter what what n is equal to. <clears throat> and we could have seen that from this step right here, but just to make it obviously true. Right, so we've shown then that this statement must be false. So of course if you look at my work on the page now, that probably makes no sense, but hopefully the explanation as I went through that made some sense. Let's try one more of these, and I'm going to make it a little bit different on this last example same idea with the quantifiers. Now let's turn this into an equality and we're going to say that the domain is all real numbers. So a little bit different than the last couple of examples because in those examples we were looking only at integers. Uh, in this one we're looking at all real numbers. So so we're asking, does there exist some x? Does there ex exist some x where we choose a value for x, any real number, so that for all real numbers, uh, x squared is equal to y? So, so let's see. We can go with our same strategy of well, if we if we choose a value for x, two, and we square it. Uh, 
is this going to be true? Right? Is this guy going to be true for all real values of y? Well, I don't think so, because it's pretty easy to think of some other real number besides 4. 4.2, 4.3, 5, 6. There's lots of real numbers where that's not going to be true. And so this <clears throat> this goes back to kind of that same idea where even if we have a real number and we square that, then that has to be positive or zero. So an easy way to refute this would be to select some negative value for y. Right? So, so we might say pick y equals, and we can use real numbers, so maybe negative 0.12 or something like that. Okay, then if we write our statement with that value in for y, <coughs> this statement's never going to be true no matter what x is, right? There's no number we can square to end up with a negative. So this is false. This is false for any real value of x. Now if we allowed for complex values, that would be another story, but our domain is all real numbers. And in fact, since our domain is all real numbers, maybe just real quick, another perspective here. Since our domain is all real numbers, really what we're looking at is just y equals x squared. And you might remember from your algebra y equals x squared looks something like this. Right in the question, <coughs> the question that we were trying to answer, we already, I think we already justified it here, but in terms of the graph, the question would be, question would be, does there exist an x, right? So could we select some specific x value? Could we select some specific x value where this equation is true, x squared equals y, for all values of y. So in other words, you'd kind of be asking, uh, is there some x where we're going to be on the graph for all values of y? And no, that doesn't make any sense, right? There's only, there's only one y value. In fact, that was why we were able to call that a function, right? If we pick an x, it's only going to correspond to one y value. Now there's there's another x value over here that gives you that same y value. But when you talked about functions, you learned that if you pick an x, it can only correspond to one y value. It can't correspond to all y values. And so that might just be another perspective, another way to to think about it, but certainly what we said here works as well. So <clears throat> you can see that the problems with nested quantifiers certainly take some thought, um, so hopefully these problems will be mind-expanding for you.